Well, my name is Corinne Hunt. I have another name, it's Gilath Leglis in my language. Um, I'm from Canada, the west coast of Canada, a native tribe called the Kumayu, and uh, I'm a designer. So what brought you here to DLD? <laughs> Many things, I think. Um, one, I, I, I met, uh, well, I designed the, uh, co-designed the Olympic medals, the Paralympic medals for Vancouver 2010. And through that, I met a man named Martin Rope from the SKD Museum in Dresden. And he, uh, and then he invited me to design an exhibit in Dresden. And once I was contracted to do that, I guess he was talking to Hubert Berda. Yeah. And then they invited us to come to speak um, in January. Yeah. So I remember actually the conversation you had on stage. Uh, I was uh, very much amazed by the story which uh, runs around this Olympic medal. Uh, can you please give us uh, a short version of what is the story behind the medal and then we try to explore the process, how, how it is to design. Uh, yeah, to design an Olympic medal, which is kind of an unusual job, huh? Absolutely. Well, the medals for the Olympics, I, I um, well, it took 18 months to design the Olympic and Paralympic medals, but one of the things that was very important to me was, and has always been, is community, and how we relate as individuals to our community. Um, so for the metal design, I chose the orca whale and because the orca whale travels in a community. And so I did this design that has four quadrants and two of them are individuals, the orcas, and then the other two are the, the community of the orcas. And, and out of that design, every metal was cropped. So every single metal was unique that the athlete received. Okay. which is a representation of their uniqueness, but they're always connected to all the other medal winners. How does this entire idea, or your idea, of how the medal should look like, how the design process should be, how does this fit into the entire vision, design vision, which was standing behind the, uh, the Winter Olympics in Vancouver? Vanock. Vancouver 21, they had a branding and design team, and Leo Obsbaum, who was the head of that design team, he, he was born in Argentina but grew up in Barcelona, and he's an architect and designer, and he had a vision, which is really wonderful, I think, um, about this sort of collaborative nature. I think of Canada in general because Canada has many, many, uh, it's very multicultural society. So I think his idea was to bring together um, all those kinds of aspects, as much, as much of that society as it could. So I collaborated with a man who was born in um, Jerusalem uh, to uh, Muslim and Jewish parents and he immigrated to Canada when he was 13. Okay. So I think that the vision of Leo was to bring as, you know, bring the idea of what Canada is to those medals. How did they find you? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's quite an unusual thing to, to get such a job, and I think it was the very first time you told me that it yep. was given outside to design the Olympic medal. Yes. Uh, how did they choose you? <laughs> how did they find you? Well, they found me. I, I design also furniture, and they saw a piece of furniture that I designed in a in a gallery, and it's very unusual in that it's tr a traditional design, but it was designed in an abstract form and in metal and glass. Um, so then they they invited me to submit a proposal to the uh, Olympic organizing committee. And that I did. And in, in the process, I mean, it was a, a long process of showing my work and the different stages that I, that I work with. And also they asked if I would be interested in collaborating, mm -hmm. if chosen, to design the medals. 
and um, so I was shortlisted and, and uh, there were eight people who had asked me several questions about what my interests were and it was really an easy, I was very nervous about it but the questions were, were quite wonderful so um, they asked again if I would be interested in the collaboration and I said yes. Yeah, so what were the questions? What makes a question wonderful? <laughs> Um, they were a lot about um, what my interests were, and, and um, I'm very much, uh, I really honor the tradition of my people. And there's a, a aspect of the culture that is, is very based in the arts. So, but I'm also interested in showing this culture in the most contemporary fashion, so that people don't have this idea of a pre-contact culture you know, that we have ceased to evolve as a culture. And so they wanted to know, you know, which artists I liked. And I like Kandinsky and, you know, Frank Gehry as an architect and Norman Foster. So I think they wanted to have an idea of who I was as a whole. And, um, you know, I, I, Leo, uh, you know, I, he, he said, who do, you, who do you really like as an artist? And I said, Kandinsky. <laughs> like, so, you know, of course it made me feel really great that I, I, it wasn't like a math test or anything, you know, it was a test that was really interested in, in, in the people. In people, yeah. yeah. So did it change your life somehow, designing this Olympic medal? Or? Um, I think it did, actually. What happened before that was um, my partner died. I was diagnosed with breast cancer and my mother died all within 11 months and um, I was chosen within a year of that happening and it was sort of an, an enlightenment and it was a chance to somehow honor those things that had happened, you know, to revive myself and um, it was a wonderful distraction. <laughs> uh, Very personal story. Yes. I didn't yeah. actually share that with many people, but yeah. the working on the medals really brought me to a place where I felt like I could express those things that were very important to me, which is community, which yeah. is my family, yeah. my culture. So what what makes this job, you said you were kind of nervous when it the medal was unveiled at the press conference. Yeah. What what were the major challenges besides doing the job? I think um, for me the, the challenge was to represent what the athletes had had uh, achieved. You know, not not just their achievements, but you know the kinds of kind of work that they do to achieve. You know, the the level of competition that they're in and. Um, I wanted them to leave with a sense of not only their own accomplishment, but a sense of where these medals came from. You know, they were from the west coast of Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So they're taking home a part of, of who we are. So what what is your besides what you just described? What is your personal uh, story around this medal, going back to your roots? Well, my roots are in a small village on the coast, and um, it's a very much a community. Uh, and we have these ceremonies called the potlatch, which are really quite wonderful. And, and for for me to share our, our story, it was really significant. And, and the village itself, when they heard that, because it was a secret, you know. So when it was unveiled, my cousin told me. He heard it on CBC on the radio in his car, and then he drove down the village, and there's somebody say, "Hey, did you hear? It was Corinne that you know designed the medals." And I got letters from all, you know, so many people. My village was very excited about it. But throughout Canada, I was well, throughout the world actually, I received many uh, responses to it. Mm. So it brought a sense of my village to, to big the big world. world. What is your understanding of we and how has it changed through your lifetime? I think that, you know, we can't get away from who we are as individuals. We shouldn't. You know, we are always individuals, but 
this sense that we are always connected at the same time. You know, that sense of connection that um, I think my ex explore exploration through that has sort of led me to the idea that how do we create peace in this world? We can only create it if we begin with ourselves and we share that and that um, that's the we, you know, the, the, shared, the shared experience of who we are.